What day is today? What day is today, Nick? Day 67. Day 67. Day 67. And it's me on my own today. Well, you guys obviously are here on the other side of the camera, but it's just myself. Uh, Nick Campbell won't be taking part in um, the session today. After yesterday's um, session, we learned a lot of things. We're not going to knock it out of the water straight away, but you know, hey, they're the beauty. That's the beauty of live, uh, live sessions. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible moment in time. That's Murphy's Law. So yesterday our uh, signal was absolutely atrocious for some reason. Um, so was Nick's. The audio went. Uh, Nick's screen then went. Nick then got confused between which deck she was using, deck of cards she was using, which deck she wasn't using. And it was hilarious. So uh, hey look, I had a laugh. Um, apologies if uh, some of you did get so much uh, fun out of it. But sure, look, we'll still get a full body session in today. Okay, so today all you need is a kettlebell or a dumbbell or something similar, a weight that you can hold in one hand and a little bit of space, about two meters square is perfect. Um, and we'll just let these people go on. Hey, Peter, how we doing? Hiya, Sharon, big wave. Hiya, Susie. Carol, what are you laughing at, Carol? Neve, how we doing? And teens, how are we all getting on, guys? Good stuff. Okay, so a couple more seconds and we'll just see um, if there's any more people want to hop on. The majority of the country is back at work. Uh, we may be working from home, we may be working from the office, doesn't really matter. Um, if you can get that extra half an hour to 45 minutes on a uh, weekday, feel free to jump in on the sessions. These sessions are free. Um, we will keep these going despite the fact that people are back in work and the gyms are reopening very soon, fingers crossed. Um, and we'll kind of see how we go from there. Hey Tom, welcome, welcome, come on in. So again, like I was saying at the start, all you need is your bell and a little bit of space. Okay, let's get into our warm up. So we're gonna go feet just beneath our hip bones, big stride forward, drop the knee to the floor, pushing aggressively through the sole of the foot, standing back up tall, and we're keeping the gap, hip width between our feet at all times. We're looking to get the full range of movement, dropping the knee right down to the floor. Squeeze your stomach. Five, featuring queen, we will rock you. What is that crap? Anyway, sorry, Nick, Nick's on uh, music duty today, so I can blame her for every track that comes on that I don't like. God, that's scary. They're, they're really scraping the barrel there, aren't they? Okay, so from here we're gonna go to our squats. We're gonna pause for three seconds at the bottom of the squat, and then we're gonna hook our fingers under our toes and then raise our hips as high as possible. Stretch out the hamstrings and the lower back for three, and then back down into that squat. Use the elbows to push the knees out as wide as possible. Keep the feet flat on the floor, and then raise the hips up high again. And then after three seconds, we're back down. So again, nice and slow, take your time. Emphasis here is on the posture. Soles the feet fully on the floor at all times. Fingers are locked under those toes and we're stretching out the hamstrings and the lower back at the top. And we're really driving the chest out and pulling the shoulder blades at the bottom. Oh, stiff after yesterday, I went for a run as well. Okay, back into the high, or down into the high plank, I should say, not back into it. So two hands, two feet on the floor, bring that left foot forward. And after three seconds, you're gonna rotate your arm as much as you can. And then change, other side. For three seconds. And then rotate the arm. Good, so we're changing sides every six seconds between left and right. So today, we're gonna throw a few little angles at you. Only one of the exercise, or sorry, one exercise needs to be done for one round only, and that's the transverse abs at the start. So for example, the first exercise we're doing today is gonna be the hollow hold and that's going to be a 45 second set and then we just move on to the next exercise straight away okay up we come okay so all we need like i was saying is our kettlebell at standby we're going to start with the hollow hold it's going to be 45 seconds hold and then we're moving into two rounds of push-ups there is no more going back to the hollow hold we're starting in 10 seconds on your back arms and legs fully extended you're going to raise those shoulder blades off the floor and flatten the smaller back into the floor in three, two, one. Shoulder blades up as high as you can and if possible raise the feet off the floor as well. But the emphasis here is keeping that back completely flat on the floor. If you're struggling to get the back flat on the floor, just put your heels back very lightly on the floor and it's all about pushing that spine. There's no curve, pushing that spine into the floor. The arms stay beyond the head in order to keep the tension on the upper core and we're controlling our breathing, 18 seconds. So we're gonna flip around into two rounds 
of 45 second push ups next. And there's going to be a five second breather in between each 45 second round. Eight seconds, we're rounded to push up. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Round we get. Regular push ups, knees or none or not. Three, two, one. Let's go. So we're dropping the chest all the way down in between the hands. We're pushing through the whole surface area of the palm of the hands. That's the fingertips, the ball of the hand, and the heel of the hand. We're squeezing our core to ensure that we're remaining parallel with the floor. We don't want our hips to go too high. We don't want our hips to go too low. And the range of movement dictates we get our chest right down to the floor. Big exhale and squeeze the stomach as we push the floor away from us through that whole surface area of the hand. We got 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Rest 5 seconds, we're going again. 4, 3, 2, 1, let's go. So after this, we have 3 rounds of reverse crunch. And those rounds are all 45 seconds. So it's a big inhale drop, big exhale, squeeze stomach, push floor away, and you're utilizing the whole palm of that hand to do so. So for those of you who went uh, online yesterday, I had Nick Campbell, one of the girls who trains with us regularly, come in on a split screen with us and choose a card out of a deck of cards, which correlated to an exercise on a sheet I gave her. And everything that could go wrong, went wrong on both sides. But it's a bit of fun. Three, two, one. Onto your backs. We're going reverse crunch, three rounds. Three, two, one. Hands on floor beside hips. Drive those hips off the floor. Those feet go straight up to the sky above the hips. We don't want them tracking up over the chest or the head. And we're looking to target the lower core. That's belly button down. So we have three rounds of reverse crunch. So we're really targeting that core with this. So you have three rounds, which means you don't have to go crazy tempo high. Focus on the technique. Try and lower your hips down using the core as opposed to just letting them drop. And then gravity pull you down. And rest. Five seconds. We're going again. Two more rounds. Three two, one, let's go. Driving those hips up to the sky. The higher we get our hips, the more your core has to resist to lower you back down to the floor. And the aim here is to go continuously for 45 seconds with perfect technique and form. It's not to go at 100 miles an hour, it's to go with perfect technique and form. Slow is key, provided we have the right technique. And once you can maintain that technique, you start to increase the tempo. But if at any point that technique starts to fail, you slow the tempo down, dial back in that tech, and pick back up. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Rest, five seconds, one more round. Four, three, two, one. Let's go. Driving those hips off the floor. Really targeting that lower core. And at the end of this round, we're jumping up, and we have four rounds of kettlebell swings. So you can alternate between left and right, or we can go right side for one round, left side for the other, it's entirely up to you. But you will be swinging for 45 seconds. And as you get tired, you gotta stay more switched on and focused on the technique and the muscles being used. 15 seconds, and then we're up and into swings. Whew, really feeling that in the core now. 10 seconds, nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Up we get. Grab your kettlebell, ready to swing in three, two, one. Let's go. So I'm gonna alternate my hands for the first round, and then for the second round, I'm gonna go right side only, and then for the third round, left, and the fourth round, I'll go back to alternating them. Because OCD. All right, so with your swing, it's all about aggression through the soles of the feet. It's all about locking those hips back into place. It's all about squeezing your shoulder blades at all times and squeezing your stomach at the top of the swing. 
The most important part of it is driving aggressively into the floor with the flats of the feet. Because without doing that, you don't have a foundation for your lift. Four, three, two, one. Rest, five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Let's go. So we're going into round two of four. So you gotta really focus on the aggression through the soles of the feet. Because that core is already tired from the reverse crunch and the hollow hold. So you gotta stay switched on and you gotta make sure you use the top two inches at your brain to keep the muscles contracting properly. So 20 seconds left in round two. How's your core feeling after uh, three rounds of reverse crunch? It's okay. Are you aware of it? Yes. Yeah. Seven seconds, six, five. Remember, squeeze that stomach at the top. Three, two, one, rest. We're going into our third round in three, two, one. Let's go. So again, aggressively driving down with the soles of the feet whilst maintaining posture on the shoulder blades will ensure that that bell pops up. And at the top of the swing, we then squeeze our stomach muscles to stop our hips pushing too far forward and then compromising your lower back. So you're standing bolt upright to attention. Whew. So 20 seconds time, and then we're into our fourth round, which is our last round of swings. Whew. 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, rest five seconds. Ready to go again, last round. Three, two, one, let's go. Whew. So, how are we getting on? Are you still focusing on driving aggressively through the soles of the feet? Keeping the shoulder blades pinned and keeping the stomach muscles tight at the top? Because if not, you gotta have a quiet word with yourself and you gotta get those three points ticked back in. Because if we don't, then we're forcing the body to still swing, you are going to end up with an injury somewhere along the chain. Because those three areas, if they are not used and not focused on, you can say goodbye to your kettlebell swing. 10 seconds, and then we're onto our back, and we are into the beast position. That's two hands, two knees on the floor. Three, two, one, down we get, bell to the side. Two hands, two knees, they're both shoulder width, raising the knees a centimeter, let's go. So the focus is now load bearing on the two hands and the two feet. The hands and feet are the same width apart, that's shoulder width. The knees are no more than a centimeter off the floor. Your shoulder blades are relaxed and the whole palm of that hand is load bearing into the floor. So in 22 seconds, we are up, we're back on the kettlebell and we're gonna go into single arm row, unsupported. We've got two rounds, that's 45 seconds on each side. It's gonna to be tough. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Up we get. Grab the bell, right hand on the bell, soft knees, posture pinned, stick your butt out the back, and pulling with that right arm. So the first thing you gotta focus on is the shoulder blades. Are the shoulder blades pulled back at all times? If you're able to stick your chest down further, then your shoulder blades are not pulled back enough. You should be pulling your shoulder blades back so much that the chest cannot push any further in front. What that does is it exaggerates the posture, exaggerates the curve in that spine, and it makes sure that we have the spine in the right position. We then squeeze our stomach, and we draw from our right lat, that's the right side of your back, to bring that bell up to the shoulder. And everything else stays rigid. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Stand tall, change hands. Soft knees, push the butt out the back, maintain that perfect posture, let's go. So again, push the chest out as much as possible. Keep the shoulder blades pinned. So at the end of this round, we're going onto the floor again, and we're going into sky reachers. That means we're gonna drive our hands up to the sky, lying back down and maintain the arms pointing to the sky at all times. So they're pointing to the sky when you're flat on your back, and then when you sit up, they transition to point to the sky above your head. You don't swing your arms, 
because when you swing your arms you generate momentum and then momentum takes the pressure off the core we want to keep all the pressure on that core stay with it guys seven seconds six five four three two one bell down on the floor Whew. hands pointing to the sky and let's sit up so we're trying not to swing the arms we're focusing on lowering ourselves down using our upper core so the last one we had was reverse crunch and that was focusing on the lower core we're now focusing on the upper core so that's belly button up to rib cage as you sit up your hands push up towards the sky and then you as you lie down using the stomach muscles the hands transition above the chest try not to swing your arms forward and remember the sky is above you it's not across the room you're not reaching across the room you're reaching straight up to the sky to the ceiling two one rest one down two to go in through nose out through mouth three two one let's go round two Whew. so after this we are into thrusters I know how much you love thrusters so it's four rounds of thrusters so we're gonna do is two on the right two on the left but before we do that we have another one and a half rounds of sky reachers so get yourself up and then slowly lower yourself down using your stomach muscles don't just flop to the floor Whew. ten seconds six seconds five four three two one and rest two down one to go you should be very conscious of your upper core now two one let's go so we're into our third round try not to let the feet creep away from you try and keep those heels nice and tight close into your bum because the closer the heels are to your bum the more you have to work the core oh, to sit yourself up because we don't have that counterbalance sticking out from the lower half of the body anymore 25 seconds to go and you're constantly reassessing your posture your technique your tempo and which muscles are being used so it's not just get in and get going and finish as quickly as possible it's get in get going and consciously regularly check and project manage and product or oh, check what you're doing quality control two one up we get into thrusters in four three two bell on the shoulder one let's go push hips back and down corkscrew the soles of the feet into the floor aggressively push the floor away just like you do on your swings keep the shoulder blades pinned back at all times and then that bell rides the energy all the way up until you're fully upright when you're fully upright you then just keep the arm going let it pop off the shoulder and your arm steers where that bell goes excellent well done so at the end of this round we got three more to follow it and then we're halfway through today's session and not one playing card in sight six seconds five four three two one rest i'm changing to the left three two one feet shoulder width hips go back hips go down drive the floor away with the soles of the feet and aggressively stand up tall so what we're doing is transferring as much energy through the hips and legs into the floor that in turn ensures the bell goes in the opposite direction to the sky and your arm is purely there to steer so the three points we talked about on the swing aggression through the soles of the feet shoulder blades pinned at all times and stomach muscles tight at the top all apply to this one as well we are still harnessing the power generated from the hip and leg extension six seconds five four three two one rest change back to the right hand side if you need to use two hands at this point by all means go for it let's go emphasis is on sticking the ass out and dropping the ass to parallel or below the knees then get pushed out to the side in the same direction the toes are pointing at no time do the heels leave the floor because we're looking looking for full surface area of the foot to transfer that energy and if you raise the heels or the toes 
you're losing vital surface area, which in turn can't transfer as much energy, which therefore makes the lift harder. Eight seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Change, back to the left. Round four, two, one, let's go. Hips back and down and drive. So after this, we're going into the dead bug hold. So we're gonna go onto our back. Again, we're pushing the small of our back onto the floor, but our hands are reaching straight up to the sky like a sky reacher. Our knees are gonna be bent at 90 and our hips are gonna be bent at 90. So we're keeping the emphasis on the core by pushing the small of the back into the floor. 20 seconds to go. 15 seconds, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell down on your backs on the floor, knees and hips at 90, arms at 90, push the small of the back into the floor. So we wanna flatten that arch into the floor, just like you did with the hollow rock, I'm sorry, the hollow hold. So my stomach is trembling right now because I'm really focusing on pushing my core aggressively so the small of my back flattens in. So in 25 seconds, we are into toe tap push-ups. We have 20 seconds left. Stay with it, guys. We got 15 seconds, and then we're around into toe tap push-ups. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Round we get. Toe tap push-ups. So we're gonna do a push-up and then tap our left toe with our right hand. Let's go. So it's down, chest on floor, up. Reach under, touch that toe. Down, chest on floor, up. Reach under, touch that toe. And in order to reach the toe, you gotta push yourself away and then pike your hips up into the sky to create that range for us to reach under. Big squeeze on the stomach as we work. Oh, nice work guys, keep moving. Oh, whew. Big inhale, drop. Big squeeze on the stomach as we exhale. Push the floor away using the whole palm and then reach under. 10 seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Five seconds. We're going again. Three, two, one. Let's go. So remember, before anything, guys, it's a push up. So if your push up is starting to fail, dial it in, slow it down, and then when you get your push up right, then you tack on the toe touch. But if you're failing, slow it down and peel it back to what you know and what you can sustain. That's all about scaling, which makes an exercise wholly accessible for everybody. So after this, we're onto our backs and we're into core row. Oh, getting tired now, I really focus on pushing to the whole palm, engaging my core, and then really reaching under as far as we can. Three, two, one, onto your back. Arms and legs fully extended. Woo. Let's go, sit up and hug your knees, and then back down, fully extend your body again. So it's really important that you reach beyond the head and touch the floor beyond your head, and then you touch the floor with your heels. Because if you don't, you're not gonna get a full extension on the core. And if you don't get a full extension on the core, you cannot get a full contraction. And the most beneficial way of toning, building muscle and burning body fat and mobilizing joints is to do the full range of movement on a muscle group, joint, tendon, ligament. So that's why we set with a floor touch at the top and bottom every time. Three, two, one, rest five seconds, ready to go again. Three, two, one, let's go. So at the end of this four, sorry, three rounds, we have four rounds of kettlebell single leg Romanian deadlift. So we're gonna really start to focus on the glute hamstring of the load bearing leg. So think about it, that if you're holding the bell in your right hand, your right leg is then the one going out behind you, leaving the floor. 
because you're going to replace where your foot was with the weight. 15 seconds, and then we're into our third round. Whew. Nine seconds, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Rest five seconds. One more round to go, right, Nick? Yeah. Yeah, three, two, one. Let's go. Up and get those knees. Every time, full range of movement. Extend as much as you can, contract as much as you can. It's like opening and closing a door. Use the full range of movement on that hinge. Oh, 28 seconds, and then we're up. We're back to the bell, and we're gonna hold in our right hand. We're gonna stand on our left leg, and we're gonna kick our right leg out behind us. And again, pushing aggressively through the sole of the foot, maintaining posture on the shoulder blades, and squeezing your stomach at the top. Oh, ad nauseum, huh? But if you get those three things right when you're load bearing on any exercise, you're generally okay. Four, three, two, one. Up we get, grab your bell. I'm gonna hold it in my right hand to start. Two, one, let's go. Shoulder blades pinned back, driving through the sole of the foot, squeezing my stomach muscles at the top, and I'm maintaining perfect posture and perfect technique at all times. So what we wanna focus on here is the back of that left leg. The hamstring area, that's the back of the knee to the bum, and the left butt cheek. So if you're not feeling it there, Put your hand very lightly on a surface, and that will just allow you freedom of movement to bend the knee slightly and really dial in where you wanna feel it. If you're feeling unstable, do that, or if you're feeling like you wanna fall over, squeeze your stomach. Three, two, one. Stay with this leg. Keep the bell in your right hand. We're gonna hammer out this left hamstring. Same side, same again, let's go. Whew. So we're really focusing now on a soft bend on the knee, very slight. The whole left foot is staying in contact with the floor. Surface area is uniform. We're not overloading the ball of the foot or the heel of the foot. We're keeping our shoulder blades pinned. Our stomach muscles and our shoulder blades are working together to keep our upper body in that perfect posture. Ooh, exercise ring closed. 15 seconds. And then we're gonna change in five seconds, in a five second window, to the right leg, left hand. Six seconds, five, four, three, two, one. Change, left hand holding, right hand load bearing. Three, two, one. Kick the left leg out, driving off the right foot, and keeping the shoulder blades pinned at all times. Try and isolate that right hamstring and that right butt cheek as much as possible. And what you will find is there's generally a fairly big difference between left and right side of the body because we're a lot more dominant on one side than the other, which means that we'll be a lot more mobile, we'll be a lot stronger, a lot more flexible. But there's pros and cons. So it's all about getting as perfect a technique as possible on each side and trying to get them onto a level playing field. Five seconds. You might need to support yourself on one side compared to the other, that's fine. Two, one, rest. Just because you even put your hand on the surface for the last side, doesn't mean you don't have to do it for this side. Let's go. Remember, the focus here is hitting the right hamstring and the right butt cheek, because we're load bearing on the right leg. If you're just load bearing on the right leg and you're not feeling it there, trust me, dial in that technique. Keep the knee slightly bent in order to hit that right hamstring, right butt cheek. So after this, we're going into the high plank bird dog. So it's gonna be high plank. The right hand is gonna be reaching out in front. The left leg is gonna be reaching out behind. And you're gonna hold that for 22 seconds. But before that, we got 12 more seconds of ordeal. 10 seconds, my right hamstring is staying low along with my right butt cheek now. Five, four, three, two, one. Ditch the bell. Here we go. High plank, right hand up. Left leg up, let's go. So if at any point you're struggling, just put your right hand down very lightly to support yourself. Keep your hips parallel with the floor. Do not stick your ass out up in the air. Remember, it's a plank. If you can't hold a position like this without doing a normal plank four points, then you shouldn't be doing it with one point off each front and back. Get ready to change now. So the left hand is up, 
the right leg is out and the emphasis here is on that core. Keep that going. We're gonna grab our kettlebell after this and we're going into floor press. So we're gonna do right hand, pushing the bell away from the chest while we're lying flat on our back. Four, three, two, one. Onto your back. Grab that bell, holding in your right hand, knees bent, punch it to the sky. Let's go. Keep that going, guys. So what we're really focusing on here is the shoulder stability. Squeezing the core, keeping the shoulder blades flat out on the floor as we push that bell straight up above the chest. It shouldn't be wobbling beyond the head or out to the side. There should be a lot of control. Yes, you can rotate the wrist and twist, but we keep that bell. Starts down by your armpit, your elbow on the floor, and then locks out above the chest on the right side. Whew. Three, two, one. Change without the bell above the head to the left hand. And let's go left side, and up we get. So, at the end of this, we're gonna put that bell back in the right hand, and we're gonna do oblique sky reach. So we're gonna be sitting up and going across the body because the left elbow will stay on the floor. The left elbow is the point of rotation, the fulcrum that is M pushing into the floor to allow us to sit up with the bell above our chest and then finish above the head in the right hand. 14 seconds, that should be getting tough now. Keep going, focus on the technique. Seven seconds, six, five, four, Three, two, one. Put the bell back in your right hand. Left hand on the floor. Extend the right arm to the sky. And we're gonna sit up on that left elbow. Push the bell to the sky. We've got three rounds of this. We're gonna do one round entirely on the right side, followed by one round entirely on the left side. I want you not pushing the bell with the arm. I want you keeping the arm locked out. And then you're gonna um, rotate on that left elbow to sit yourself up. Try not to swing the bell. When you swing the bell, you are using that additional weight to lift you off the floor, and therefore the core doesn't actually have to do anything. When you're all the way up, control the descent back down to the floor using your abs. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Change, left hand. Remember, it's not about the amount of reps, it's the quality of the rep. Let's go. So we're driving off that right elbow. We're sitting up, bell goes to the sky, and we're lowering ourselves down using the left obliques because we're twisting ourselves back down onto the floor. This is getting tough now. So next round is our third round, and we're gonna go into half right side, half left side. But first we've got 20 seconds left on the left. 15 seconds, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Change it back to the right hand, half a round on the right, 3, 2, 1, let's go. Again, control, try not to let those two knees collapse to the side, keeping the arm fully extended above the chest. Rotating on that left elbow, Whew. 10 seconds. And then we're gonna change left hand doing the uh, raising, right hand or right elbow doing the rotation. Whew. And change, left hand is holding, right hand is rotating, or elbow is rotating, let's go. So at the end of this round, we're up, the bell is gonna be in our right hand, and we're gonna do a clean and jerk. So the bell is gonna start on the floor, it's gonna come up to the chest, and then when it gets to the chest, you're gonna reset and then hip drive above the head. Three, two, one, up we get. Oh, bell is on the floor, two hand, or right hand is on the bell, shoulders back, chest out, ass low, drive the floor away to the chest, drive the floor away above the head. We're gonna stay with the right hand entirely for the first round, and then the second round is gonna be left hand. And remember, you are pushing the floor away aggressively with the soles of the feet. You are maintaining posture at all times with the shoulder blades and you are squeezing your stomach 
at the top. That should sound familiar, because I've been saying it with every kettlebell exercise we've done standing so far. So again, aggression through the soles of the feet, shoulder blades pinned at all times, stomach muscles tight at the top. Two, one, change hands. Left hand on the bell, three, two, one, let's go. Drive the floor away aggressively, hip drive the bell above the head aggressively. So again, at all times, you are driving the floor down in order to lift that bell up. So you're not actually pulling the bell at any point, you're driving the floor away in order for that bell to travel up. And you're just then capitalizing on the bell moving on its own to slip in underneath it and get it into the next position of power. So we don't want that bell flipping over the wrist. We want to twist in behind it, rack it on the chest, and then drive the floor away. Let's get it above the head. 10 seconds, then we're going back to the right side. Whew. Five seconds, four, three, two, one. Back to the right side, two more rounds to go. One on the right, one on the left. Three, two, one, off we go. Drive floor away, back to the chest, drive floor away above the head and you cannot drive that floor away unless your ass is low enough think of your ass low in order to coil the spring if your hips are high and your head is low you're not going to get anything out of it except lower back pain so keep the shoulder blades pinned shoulders back chest out ass low and the soles of the feet aggressively pushing through the floor 15 seconds and then we're going to go to the left side Flying through it today, guys. We got a Tabata finish after this. Four, three, two, one. Change to the left side. Three, two, one. Let's go. Drive floor away. Drive floor above head. So remember, as you get tired, your arm and your shoulder are saying, I'll help. And they start to pull the bell up your body. We don't want that. We want to use the big muscles. That's the quads, the glutes, the hips, the core, and they are driving the floor down, which in turn propels the bell up because you're just not letting go of it. And that's what generates the power for you to slip in behind it and then hip drive it above the head. 15 seconds, and then we are down into mountain climbers. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bell down on the floor. So we're going into mountain climbers in three, two, two hands on the floor, one, let's go. So we're getting that knee under the body, hit the elbow on the other side. So it's a 20 second mountain climber. Seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one. Onto your back, we're going bike crunch in four, three, two, one up right knee left elbow left elbow right knee and we're changing between the two but we're keeping the hands back beyond the head in order to get the full range of movement like we did on the core row five seconds four three two one round we get mountain climbers round two or four three two one let's go Whew. oh you slippy floor so we're drawing that knee under the body. There is a rotation, because we want to get those obliques in play, keeping the shoulder blades relaxed. The whole palm of the floor. Six seconds, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Down we get on our backs. Three, two, one, let's go. Up and twist, down, change. Up and twist, down, change. Whew. So, we got 11 seconds, and then we're into our mountain climbers for the second last time. Oh, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Round we get mountain climbers. Whew. Three, two, one, let's go. So again, low bearing through the hands, whole palm of the hand in contact with the floor, drawing the knee up under the body, trying to get it across to the other side. Get those obliques working for you. We have four, three, two, one. On your back. Two, one. Up we get. 
rotate across. So really twist as much as you can around that body. We've got 12 seconds and then we're into our last round on each seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Round we get, last round on mountain climbers. Three, two, one, let's go. So it's 20 seconds of mountain climbers, keeping the tempo high. We're gonna finish this with a nice high heart rate. Shoulder blades relaxed, palms on the floor. Seven seconds, five, three, two, one. On your back, last 20 seconds of the workout. Three, two, one, let's go. Open twist across, Woo. open twist across. That's the work guys. 10 seconds left on our Tuesday session. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, rest. So, well you jumped out there, you've got two clean and jerk on each side. Sorry, one on each side. Nick's just catching up because we're at home, which means the kids are here which means all of a sudden they need to come in and talk to you immediately because it's so important that they have to talk to you right now about the colour of the sky outside. The dog, the, the dog did a poo out the front. <laughs> ah, life. Okay guys, how are we feeling? That was a high heart rate finisher. Let's hope today's sound actually worked as opposed to yesterday. Okay, so give yourself a little bit of space. We'll get into a passive stretch. Feet nice and wide. Soft on the knees, put all the weight on your heels, push your hips out the back, and drop the hands to the floor. And control that breathing. In through nose, out through mouth, slow the heart rate down. So um, let us know how you got on. Give us a message. I'm really paranoid that the sound hasn't been working for the last 40 minutes, and you guys have just been looking at a silent movie. Great work today, thanks for your job. Oh yeah, grand, the sound actually did work. Okay, good. Okay guys, so we're going into a lunge. Drop the knee to the floor, interlock the fingers, hands behind the head, and drive the hip forward. Shoulder blades relaxed. Left butt cheek relaxed. Left knee on the floor. We're looking for the stretch through the core. We're looking for a stretch through the hip flexor. In through nose, exhale out the mouth, and relax into the stretch. Seven seconds, Nick. That's it, good stuff. And then we're gonna change to the other side. Let's go. That's the one. So again, control the breathing in through nose, out through the mouth. You got one or two rounds of that, Nick? Three. Three, oh, hoo, hoo. She's catching up. She's got her three oblique sky reacher with the kettlebell. So she's gonna go right hand for one side, left hand for one side, or left hand for one round, and then half and half on the third round. Okay, up we come, guys. We are gonna drop our right hand down the back in between our shoulder blades, left on the elbow, and pull to the left, feel the stretch down the right side. Good stuff. So tomorrow, Wednesday, a little bit more heavy on the core, and change. In through nose, out through mouth. Good and tough on the stomach today to lead up till tomorrow. It's a rest, Nick. Change to the left side, right elbow on the floor. See, I'm a taskmaster for her too. Whew, okay. And you can make me a lunch after that as well. Okay, um, I'm gonna keep the camera rolling so she can't attack me and I have witnesses. <laughs> I'm getting looks. Okay guys, so I will see you tomorrow, Wednesday. Core heavy and um, fingers crossed the sound works again tomorrow. Okay, have a good one guys. I'll just go keep an eye on her. Bye.